This is a quick video to talk through my setup of Roland Sound Canvas modules. So uh, I have the Roland MT32. This is the older version, the original version, um, which uh, I guess something different about the headphone jack, but this is the original. And then I have a Roland SC88ST Pro. Uh, when I bought this, it was cheaper than the SC88 Pro non-ST version because basically it doesn't have any kind of a readout on it. So everything had to be controlled within Cakewalk that I was using at the time for selecting sounds and things like that. And I still have it to this day. Um, I couldn't get rid of it because it's such an amazing sound module. It has just an incredible number of uh, different awesome vintage Roland synth sounds and drum sets as well and then i have the roland or sorry the eddie roll sd20 which is basically roland but it was their desktop division that branched off in the 90s and this basically has the sounds of the sd80 and the sd90 but in like a smaller sound module and it's slightly reduced it doesn't have any insertion effects and it has slightly smaller number of sounds, but this is super cool because um, it has the ability to run it in GS mode or General MIDI 2, and it's just small and it's USB powered. So really convenient um, depending on, I guess, what you're trying to do with MIDI. And then I have, um, this is the Avid Mbox 3. And the way I use this is, this is my digital audio output for my uh, uh, Windows XP machine, which is what I use for kind of my retro gaming. And what's cool about this is I'm able to get really high quality um, digital audio for the gaming within Windows XP coming out of this. And then this has a MIDI output. So I'm running the MIDI output of that directly into the MT32 MIDI input. And then I have, what's really cool is the MT32 has a MIDI through. So I run the MIDI through into the Roland SC88 Pro ST. So what that allows me to do is I don't have to have um, a separate MIDI output like an MPU 401 or something like that coming out of this um, old desktop machine. I just have the one MIDI output coming out of the Avid Mbox into the MT32 and then the MT32 MIDI through powers the output of the SC88 ST Pro. It just sends an exact copy of um, the MIDI data going into the MT32. So the way that I manage that is depending on which sound module I want to use with um, the gaming. Uh, like if I want the MT32, I have this all feeding into this little line level, uh, I guess, mixing box. And this input allows me to control either the um, SD20 output or the SC88 Pro, depending on which I have it. Uh, outputting through Windows as my MIDI device. So, for example, if I want to use the SD20, I just select the SD20 as um, the output because this is an USB module, so it's running USB out of Windows XP, whereas um, the MT32 and the SC88 Pro are running exclusively from MIDI output, which is coming out of the, um, the Mbox. Then, if I, want to, if I don't want to use the SD20, I just select the Mbox external MIDI output in Windows XP, and then I have that running. And this is basically simultaneously outputting sound from the MT32 and the 88 Pro, and I just dial in whichever I want to use. So if I'm doing games where it's MT32, I just turn the um, 88 Pro level down, completely off, and the MT32 up. And if I'm playing um, games where I want the SC88 Pro, I just turn the volume up on the 88 Pro. 
And this is probably all really confusing, but um, let's just put it this way. Um, anytime I'm running general MIDI output through gaming, through DOSBox games, or um, anything in Windows XP, basically it's always sending the MIDI signal into the MT32. It's just a matter of if I want to hear the MT32 or not. The MT32 is simultaneously running the exact same through the 88 Pro. So they're both outputting MIDI sound at the exact same time, the same signal. Um, so if I wanted, I could actually have both the MT32 and the 88 Pro outputting. I could hear those at the same time layered, um, which is interesting, but probably wouldn't normally want to do that. Usually you want to hear the MT32 by itself, um, or you want to hear the 88 Pro by itself. And so that's how I, how I do that, is I just run it through this little MIDI box. So if anyone's uh, in the same situation like me where they have something like this that's USB powered where they can have a MIDI output coming out of it, but they have more than one device that they want to power, uh, they want to send MIDI data to. Like these devices, like the Roland 88 Pro and the MT32, they're not USB, so you can't actually run USB for your MIDI output. You have to power these via MIDI data. So this is a cool workaround because you're basically sending it to both at the same time and then you're just turning up the one that you want to hear. Anyway, yeah, somebody might find this useful. And this little thing is pretty awesome. This Rolls Minimax 2. I think I bought it on Amazon. It was pretty cheap too. And this also has a headphone output. So if you want to listen, this outputs the um, everything, the uh, digital audio and the MIDI so you can listen to that through the headphone jack as your output, or um, I also have it running into an Aukio, which is running through like a home theater system. So if I don't want to wear headphones, it just comes right out of these speakers, which is um, another option. And uh, if anyone's interested, I'm running a um, Samsung monitor here. This is kind of the old fashioned four by three um, perspective, which is really great for these old games. Um, because that's how they ran. They didn't run 16 by 9. And this is a Dell XPS 400, which I've had for quite a while. So yeah, if you like kind of the retro gaming thing, this is a really nice ideal setup. Um, it's running Windows XP, and I've got uh, these games I bought on GOG. Uh, like, they're running through either ScumVM or uh, through... Most of them are running through DOSBox, um, which is a great option because you can just buy those on GOG and everything will run. You don't have to install DOS or anything crazy like that. Uh, and I've got on here like Phantasmagoria, the first and second game, Gabriel Knight 2, The Beast Within, Return to Zork. Return to Zork is super awesome on the MT32 because back when I first used to own this on CD-ROM, back in the day when it came out, I had a Gravis ultrasound, so the instruments would map properly to that. But the problem that I found more recently is I don't have a Gravis ultrasound anymore. It's not even compatible with this computer. I wanted to have the Roland type higher quality MIDI sounds, but the problem is um, Return to Zork supports general MIDI or MP401, but it ends up playing the wrong sounds coming out of this 88 Pro because it's just not mapped properly. It's it's really optimized for um, like the Gravis ultrasound or the MT32. And when you run the MT32, just like the Gravis ultrasound, it'll actually play the correct instrument patches. Um, and the reason why is because MT32 has different instrument mappings than the sound canvases. So, you know, for example, if patch number 13 on this is like a synth patch or something, and it's totally different than on a sound canvas. A sound canvas might be something totally wrong, like a, a harpsichord or something, and then you hear a harpsichord playing in Return to Zork instead of like a specific synth patch. So, yeah, this is a really cool setup. Um, you know, well, lucky enough to have the Roland 
SC88 ST Pro from originally when I bought it, um, back when they came out. And then I more recently added this MT32. I think I got it for 120 bucks on Reverb.com. The sounds are great in this, um, really good and good for kind of retro gaming. This SD20 is uh, really, really nice because it's so small. And then I also have the Roland, sorry, the Eddie Roll SD80, uh, which is set up in a different room, and I'm running a keyboard through that. That was um, probably kind of like the height of the Roland Sound Canvas era, um, which became the Eddie Roll brand which is their desktop music production brand. Um, I think the SD80 and the SD90 were kind of like the furthest that they ever went with the sound quality. Um, they were 24-bit, which was a big difference because the 88 Pro was, I think, 16-bit. And they were, I believe, 44.1 kilohertz in terms of the clarity. So, whereas the... 88 Pro, they were some lower sample rate, like something weird, like 30 kilohertz or something. But I have to say, I'm a bigger fan of the patch sounds on the Sound Canvas series and the MT32 than I am on these Eddie Roll ones. The Eddie Roll ones are much more realistic sounding, but um, didn't really stand the test of time as well, in my opinion. They were a little bit... Um, kind of what was popular in the early 2000s and the late 90s. But uh, the drum sounds on the SD20 and the SD80, SD90 are definitely much more realistic. And so if you're looking for like realism, that's an option. They also had velocity sensitive patches. So when you were hitting a snare drum, if you were hitting it lightly, uh, it was a totally different light sample than if you were hitting it really loud. Whereas the 88 Pro didn't have that capability. Everything was always the same velocity. But the drum sounds are awesome on the SC88 SC Pro models. They're really good. They also hold up really well. And they have good synth, um, kind of synthetic type sounds like TR-808, 909. Um, all of the like vintage Roland drum machine sounds. This does really well, this 88 Pro. And then the MT32, what's great about this is it just, it's got um, kind of a more, less realistic sound, but much more 80s sounding. So the synth sounds on this are really cool, and some of the bell sounds are excellent. So anyway, thanks for checking it out. Uh, that pretty much covers this video, and um, hope you enjoy your vintage retro gaming. And um, yeah, if you don't want to buy any of this, and you're really good at hacking things. You can create a Raspberry Pi box and you can probably emulate all of these. By the way, I do want to mention I also own a Raspberry Pi and I have a bunch of uh, old Atari games and Nintendo, Sega, all that. So I have the Raspberry Pi, but uh, just not for my vintage kind of PC gaming. I like to get those original sounds out of these. And I'm also a musician as well, so I've done a lot of work with these sound modules um, especially this one. I actually scored a movie soundtrack with this, a horror movie, and uh, got really good results as a result of the insertion effects on this, which that's something that set these 88 Pros apart, which is um, you could actually apply things like distortion um, and other things in real time over the MIDI signal. It was almost like a, um, almost like a guitar pedal um, built into the sound module. So the MIDI would feed that MIDI signal into the, um, those effects, and then that would output. So you, could, you would play playing a MIDI guitar on this, and it would sound totally fake. But then when it ran through the distortion unit, uh, for example, on a distorted guitar, it would sound totally real. So really, really impressive stuff. And um, if anyone wants to get into this, uh, it's fun. So... All right, thanks for watching.